Hi everybody. Today we're going to talk a bit about sign compression. I'm going to show you a sound and we're going to dissect it and then I'm also just going to talk a bit about my opinions on the methodology as a whole. So here is the sound. <laughs> Uh, so those of you who are familiar with sign compression methodology might say to yourselves, hey, that doesn't really sound like sign compression, and I'll talk about that in a sec. Um, but first, let, let's just talk about what sign compression is. So like a lot of bass stuff in, in modern neuro type sound design, you take, you rely on a lot of filtering or otherwise destructive type of processing and heavy compression in order to uh, get a lot of movement in your sound while retaining that big like wall of sound. So here is a patch that I've made in Patcher uh, and I'll be offering a simplified version of this patch for free here in the video description. Uh, so let's uh, let's open it up. So first thing I'm going to do, I have on top of the sign that we're going to be working with the sine wave, I also have some FM going and some additional harmonics on the sine wave. So let's disable the FM for now and let's make this just a needle needle sine wave. So let's play the sound again with just the sine wave. Right. So what's going on here is that we have a sine wave, a regular roll, you know, up and down sine wave, and we're running it through a wave shaper, a simple saturation here inside of Citrus. Um, the filter is not doing anything. I have it disabled. Um, that's just the filter is where the wave shaper lives. Uh, from there, it's going into a notch filter, and we have a, our control panel here, uh, notch one, two, three, four, and five, and those correspond to all these five notch filters. And we're automating the position of the notch. Now, uh, the reason I put a uh, a saturation curve after the initial sine wave, but before the first notch, is that if you just have a sine wave and you run a notch filter over it, the set, the sign is just going to go in and out. There's not a whole, you don't get any like real movement out of it, I guess, unless you count the, the part where it's moving up and down in volume to be movement. But it, I prefer to just stick a, um, a wave shaper already before the first notch. And then, so you can get some variance spectrally. And then we run that through another, uh, saturation curve. And then we compress the bejesus out of it with a compressor. Uh, and then you do that, route that into another notch and you do that five times. Uh, again, each notch being controlled by one of these. And then uh, from there, it's just processing it to sound how you want it to sound. I put it through an EQ where I'm taking a bit of a dip out at about 300 hertz. Um, this kind of low mid, like high bass section sounds kind of clogged sometimes. Um, I don't know what causes that from like a science kind of DSP sound standpoint, but or like I guess like auditory science, but I don't really care. <laughs> I just take the notch out. I, I tame the highs a little too there too, but probably not that necessary because here in the Maximus, I'm slamming everything up uh, on each band. And if you if you've seen my first bass tutorial, um, I talk a bit about this. Um, I'll link that in the description about what's going on here. But basically, this is uh, helping kind of normalize everything. I, uh, do it on the master two, not as aggressively. And then a final EQ to just kind of shape the sound a little. Um, I'm bringing the highs down mostly just with this EQ. That's what I'm doing. Um, inside of this Maximus too, I'm also cutting off everything below 30 Hertz using this low cut knob. And I'm bringing the highs down a little preemptively here in Patcher. Um, so not the cleanest implementation, but this will do. So what's going on here uh, more I guess in a like an actual sound standpoint, every time you take this sine wave and you um, every t when you add a saturation curve to it or when when you distort anything, uh, it's basically adding harmonics to it. Uh, this a saturation curve adds uh, well, it, it adds harmonics. I guess what I should say distortion adds overtones. They're not always harmonic. Um, that's that's more accurate. So a saturation curve adds harmonics to it. Uh, which are a multiple of the original frequency that we're talking about. And so this is all a nice clean compression all the way through. I find that this is a bit better than having a non-clean distortion because it gets too messy by the time you get to the end. But you can play with that and because everyone can work with different sounds. And I'm going to contradict myself a little later, Well, so I'll get there in a bit. But the point is, uh, you, you build up 
overtones of some kind, whether they be harmonic or not, uh, and you use notch filters to create movement in them, and the filtering them with a notch, of course, makes them quieter, and so you bring that back up with compression to you retain some of the movement, but you keep the loudness. And then you do that over and over and over again, and you get a sound. Um, I'm not the first person to do this technique at all. There's like a like a gajillion tutorials for this on YouTube. I'm I, mine's probably not even like that going to be that good. But um, hopefully this this shows you how to do it here in FL Studio with Patcher, and hopefully I show you something that makes a little bit of sense. Plus, also I'm going to show you a bit of my own twist on sine compression because, as I said earlier, I don't really like the term sine compression. So yeah, so basically it all goes through, it all comes out, and boom, you have this sound I just showed you. Uh, I'll play it again for reference. Personally, I think it's a little boring. Um, not that it doesn't have potential, it certainly does, but uh, you're losing out by making your initial sound just a sine wave. Uh, if you add a harmonic in some initial harmonics in a controlled fashion, you get you can get a lot of initial sound sculpting that works a lot better. Uh, so let's uh, let's do that. Let's play this, and then I'll be adding kind of some harmonics to change the sound as we go. So as you can hear there, just by, uh, this is no longer a sine wave, it's now whatever the hell this is. Uh, it's a sine wave plus a bunch of harmonic overtones. Uh, and so then that gives us a lot more information just right off the bat. Uh, and by information, I guess I mean uh, sonic content uh, to be destructively manipulated by the notch filters and then saturated and compressed and blah, blah, blah over and over again. Uh, so, oh, one thing I've missed. I also have a unison on here. It has two of them playing and with a 19% um, pitch variance between them. So that can contribute a bit of warble to it, but that's not a huge part of the sound. But yeah, so at this point, this isn't a sine anymore. And so, but this, in my opinion, sounds better than using just a sine wave. So um, you could, I guess, keep stacking these over and over and you have like 50 of them, you can probably get some cool content uh, with like a similar level of sound density and interestingness as this, but uh, why do it the hard way? Uh, I think it's better to, to just start off with something that's not a sine wave. Um, when you use FM in a context like this, it's really easy for it to go overboard because uh, FM, as we know, is another way to add a lot of interesting harmonic content or inharmonic content over the top of your original waveform. So I'm going to re-enable the FM I have here. And so my modulator wave is just a sine wave one octave higher than the, ba the baseline wave that we're using. And uh, I have it fully modulating it, but my uh, parameter, my macro control, uh, so the global X modulator here, that is, I only have it going from zero to 50% because at 50% of full modulation, uh, it already sounds pretty extreme and it, anymore and it stops being like a bass and it just starts being more just crazy noise. Um, and I'm all for crazy noise, but that's not what I'm here to teach you to do in, in this tutorial. So I only have it to 50%. Um, alternatively, you can stick this back up to 100 and then change this knob to 50%, whatever you want. Uh, so let's that's enabled. So this automation curve here, uh, this is controlling the, the FM quantity. So let's listen to this. <laughs> So that's uh, another way to add interesting flavor to your sine compression. Um, another, an alternative to that, if we take away the FM again, is to actually add a little bit of noise. So let's let's see what that sounds like. So it adds some grit in the high end, and of course, the higher it goes, the noisier and grittier it sounds. Um, I like to just put like no more than 10% if that, usually more like 5% or something. Um, but yeah, so that with some FM. Get some really crazy sounds. And this is a bit more top heavy than a lot of sound compression typically sounds like. 
uh, we're deviating from quite a bit from what the typical sine compression sound is. Um, and so if you want just the, the typical sine compression sound, then don't do any of that extra crap. Just stick with that sine wave. And that's a 100% valid way to go about things, especially if you plan on doing a lot of post-processing, like in resampling. Sometimes you don't want to start off with a really heavy, crazy sound. You want to just um, have a simple sound that will not get too extreme the more you process it. So this is that's kind of it. Um, the, to, so to, to summarize, we're, we have a sine wave. It's going through a um, an initial uh, saturator, and then we have five series of uh, an initial notch um, with a saturator and then a compressor. Um, and then we're doing a bit of shaping here. I guess the, the fifth one here, I didn't put a compressor on it, but you can if you want. And then at the end here, we're just kind of shaping it down with some EQ and a Maximus, which is a multiband compressor. So. Um, and to recap the reasons why I don't like the term sine compression, I think because you can get better sounds out of using something that's not a sine wave, uh, i.e. putting in extra harmonics onto your sine wave so it's not a sine wave anymore, uh, and or putting in some noise, and or using FM on it. And so, yeah, hopefully this is informative. Hopefully I'm able to bring something to the table with this tutorial that other sine compression tutorials don't do. Uh, I'm going to be putting the patch for this, a simplified version of this patch in the description. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, and if you have any suggestions for other tutorial topics you'd like me to do, please let me know. Uh, thank you. Have a good day.